Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Reb Talk. David Callum here with you, and uh, we're excited to have number three Reb Talk. We cranked it back up and doing a weekly version of Reb Talk, not only uh, our audio slash podcast version, but video as well. And I know a lot of you have responded in a positive way, and we're hoping that uh, you're getting a little entertainment and also some good information uh, each week. Had a really fun show last week, uh, and I, I really enjoyed it third segment, especially when we get to see some people maybe that uh, you don't know that are behind the scenes and doing such a good job. And, and Keith, I know you get to work with those people every day as we have our athletic director, Keith Carter, looking sharp. And uh, you're like you're going somewhere. You can't go anywhere, right? Well, uh, you know, I guess we can say this. We record this show a little pre, pre-Thursday when it comes out. Yeah. Well, I had to do something for our student athletes tonight and uh, do a little recording for them. So I actually had a tie on before this and a jacket. Um, but I took it off. I took it off for this one, DK. I'm not worth the tying jacket. Like <laughs> You're always worth it. You're always, always worth it. Worth it. Okay. Uh, but we're glad to have you again this week. It's been fun to visit with you to the head end of each one of our, our shows. But uh, I don't know if you got a chance to see Josie and, of course, Shannon the week before. But uh, those have been kind of lengthy segments. It's been really great information so far. It's been kind of cool getting to meet those type of people that work in the athletic department. Yeah, we got some great people in our department. And I think that, you know, like you said, a lot of times uh, people are just working behind the scenes, doing a great job and, and doing what they do. And, uh, you know, Shannon, I think I mentioned this last week, but he's done such a great job. I, I asked him to be on the, uh, the athletics liaison and, and you know, person on the committee on campus that's been talking about all of the scenarios with the coronavirus and, um, you know, sitting in, in those meetings every day at 8 a.m. On, on these calls. And he's been tremendous. And, sends us a report right after, you know, every time. And then, and then Josie, you know, so important, you know, to what we do in athletics and with mental health becoming such a, a big topic and an important topic, you know, not only in sports, but just in society in general. Um, she's such a resource. And I know our student athletes love her. So our staff loves her. Um, and she does a tremendous job. One, one of the top in, in her field. And uh, we're very, very blessed to have her at Ole Miss. A little bit later in the show tonight, we're going to have get the opportunity to meet our brand new head volleyball coach. Uh, we're excited to have her and also Wilson Love. Kayla uh, Banworth is our new uh, volleyball coach. And uh, boy, she's a highly decorated person when it comes to the world of volleyball. So I know you're awfully proud that you were able to, uh, and the staff, uh, you know, hire somebody of her uh, caliber to come lead our volleyball program. And then Wilson Love has just been phenomenal as the head football strength and conditioning coach so far. Yeah, well, first with Kayla, you know, if you play for the U.S. national team, you're pretty good at what you do. And yeah. so as a player, very highly decorated. And then, uh, you know, as an assistant coach, uh, was just a rising star. And, and I credit our, our, our committee that, that kind of brought her to campus. And, uh, you know, when I sat down with her, I was just so impressed with what I thought she could bring to the table. And obviously from a recruiting standpoint, a lot of times when you're a recruit and that head coach comes in and they have the, the accolades that she had as a player, as a coach, um, you know, you want to go play for that type of person. So really excited to have her. Actually, she she just moved into our neighborhood, so my neighbor as well. So that's a good thing. <laughs> oh, we should have um, warned her about that. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Rowdy over at the Carter house, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then Wilson, man, uh, I, I wish he had a little more energy. You know, that's the only <laughs> thing. I wish he, we could just get him to have some energy. Uh, no, he, he's very energetic and, and was trained at Alabama under Coach Saban and Scott Cochran and uh, you know, it just brings a lot of intensity, and, and you can already tell just in the short time that he's been here that the players really respect him. Uh, he has their ear, and, uh, you know, they can tell right away that he's going to make them much better and, and, and be a better football player. So uh, just excited to have him, and uh, I know that uh, everyone watching tonight will enjoy, you know, listening to him. Yeah, we'll have both of those on a little bit later. Keith, give me an overview of staff morale. Is it slipping a little bit or everybody still hanging in there? I know we get close. We say maybe we're going to open up next week, and then the governor comes out and says, yeah, we need one more week. I mean, uh, I know that's kind of be pretty stressful. I know not only us in the sports world, but just people in general. Yeah, you know, I, I think overall, David, that we're, we're in a pretty good place. We actually had a, an all-staff meeting last Wednesday at 1 o'clock, and I think we ended up with like 200 and – I don't know, 21 of our staff members that were on the Zoom call, which was great. Wow. And uh, we had different people giving reports throughout the, you know, the call. And I just would scroll through so I could see everybody's face, you know. And I think it was just so cool to just see people's faces after a month. You know, I, there's people I haven't seen or talked to in a month. 
And, wow. you know, we, we do pride ourselves on, on having a great family atmosphere in our department. And, um, you know, I think for us to get to see each other, we were only on the call for about 25 minutes, but got a lot of texts and a lot of emails saying how much people enjoyed that. So we'll continue to do that. But um, I think we're in a good place. I mean, we got great people, uh, you know, people that, that love this place. They want to work hard for Ole Miss. And, um, you know, for us, we're doing everything we can to keep people working and keep people engaged. Um, and, and we want to do that. But um, I, I was really happy to see everyone last week. And, um, you know, I hope everybody you know, on our staff knows that, that we're all working hard to get everybody, everybody back here as soon as possible. It's been fun to watch them through social media since you can't interact. We got the social distancing thing going on, but a lot of the staff members, coaches, players even have, have taken advantage of, of communicating not only with each other, but with the general public through social media. Yeah. I mean, it's really your only way to, to communicate right now, you know, and, and I think, uh, you know, again, the, the thing about Ole Miss and, and the thing I learned probably, you know, within the first few times I came to campus it's such a social place, you know, it's a relationship place. And for us not to be able to, you know, go to a game or go to dinner or, you know, just, just interact with people and, and be close to them. It's hard. It's hard for us. And so uh, I think everybody's trying to find an outlet where we can at least communicate. And, and like I said, see each other's faces, uh, which is good. But uh, you know, again, I think we've talked about this a few times. I, I just hope that once this is all done and, and we're back to normal, that people remember, you know, and don't take for granted the fact that you can go up and shake somebody's hand or right. you know, give somebody a hug or, or whatever it is, um, because I think that that's, that's part of our culture and that's part of who we are. So um, it'll be nice to do all that, but it, it is certainly nice to have, you know, this type of option, this type of technology, at least to stay in touch. One of those events you're talking about, we do Rebel Choice Awards every year, and it's an SB style show the student athletes get dressed up to the nines they look great you get to hug on them and brag about them and they get to hang out with each other and we're losing all that but we did rebel choice online made the best of it and I, you just got an incredible staff that uh can make those things happen surely not as good as the the, the real thing but nonetheless uh, still try to keep moving and, and do as much as you can yeah, that's just such a great event. Jennifer Saxon on our staff does, does a tremendous job with that. The, the M Club is, has helped out a lot with that as well. Um, but it's, it's so fun for the student athletes. You know, uh, we're so used to seeing them in their uniform and their practice gear, uh, you know, and all of a sudden they're wearing suits and dresses and, you know, everybody looks totally different. They're, they're in a little different element. And so I think it's always so cool to see them get dressed up and, um, and do that. So we'll, we'll do that. We did that online and um, you know, it's, it's always fun. And, and again, Jen Saxon is, is the person in charge of all that and, and does a really good job. Keith, let me ask you about conversations that are going on that may be different from last week to this week with the SEC office uh, moving forward, being ready to, to flip the switch when we, we are released to, to, to go ahead. I know we had the conversation about when can the student athletes come in? Is it tied to the Ole Miss students and all those things? What's just the latest over last week's time? Well, there's been a lot of discussion about that, David. And, and you know, for us, I think that, um, you know, the whole key is to, like you said, to be prepared for whatever, whatever we're allowed to do, whatever medical experts, you know, say what we can do within whatever time frame, we've got to be ready for that. And so I think on, on the SEC conference level, uh, in our calls there, we're basically looking at every scenario, you know, from, from starting the fall sports on time, you know, around the 1st of September, um, you know, to, to maybe play in sports in the uh, fall sports in the spring, you know, as kind of a kind of a worst case scenario. So we're looking at all different scenarios there. And then obviously, you know, depending on when you start playing competition, you got to get those student athletes back to campus, get them back in shape, uh, get them acclimated. So just so many conversations there. But, you know, it's such a moving part, a moving target, because, you know, if, if Mississippi opened up tomorrow, well, Florida may not open up tomorrow. And there, there's 11 states in our footprint of the SEC. So, um, you know, it's almost like there's decisions to be made at the state level, at the institutional level. But then when you get to the league level, there's, there's more decisions to be made. And then above that, if the SEC gets going, well, who says the Pac-12 or the ACC or, or whatever can get going? So there's just – there's so many layers to this. Um, I, I feel confident that we're going to land in a great place. There's a lot of smart people working on this. Uh, to try to get us back. But certainly we want to make sure that we're taking in all the medical, uh, you know, information that we can. We want to make sure that first and foremost that we're keeping our student athletes and our fans and our staff safe 
Um, but certainly we're, we're motivated to get people back here and, and get, you know, get started as soon as we can. We understand how important, you know, those sports are and, and, and not just from a, you know, getting people back, but just a morale standpoint and, uh, you know, helping the psyche of, of, our, of our fan base, our student athletes and our staff. So uh, we're working on all that. And, and as I mentioned, kind of off air, you know, I feel, I feel great because now it, it felt like the first three or four weeks of this, it was just a day by day, how do we survive? You know, we were just kind of going with real-time information. Let's get through the day and see what tomorrow brings. But now I feel like we, we kind of settled in. We, we got our student athletes in a great place, our staff's in a great place. Uh, and now we're just ready to prepare for the summer and the fall. Yeah, no doubt. And look, before I let you go uh, this week, of course, you were born in Arkansas. You remind me of this all the time. Born in Arkansas, you know, played all your high school sports in Arkansas, came to Ole Miss. You've been in Mississippi now, I guess, twice as long as you were in, right. in Arkansas, getting close to that to say the least. But I know that having been a former high school player and, you know, being coached by a high school coach, a lot of these spring high school kids now have lost their opportunity to, to finish. And that that's kind of heavy on the heart. But, uh, you know, I, I know that they understand that they got to do what they got to do. But what's your, what's your message to all these kids that, you know, they may not get a chance on our level, but uh, their sports kind of came to an end? Yeah, you know, I thought about that a lot because, you know, we're, we're so wrapped up in our world in college athletics and these spring sports, they're going to get an extra year of eligibility, which is obviously the right thing to do. Um, but that's not happening in high school, you mm -hmm. know. And so it, it's really sad. You know, I, my son Drew's a ninth grader on, on the baseball team. And, you know, all those seniors, they just they don't get their senior year of baseball. They played a couple of games and uh, and they got to move on. So um, it's really sad and, and you hate it, um, you know, taking it away from sports, I mean, senior prom and just graduation, a lot of, a lot of things that you just don't, you don't get back. And so, um, man, just unprecedented times and, and something that I've said it before, there's just no manual or no guidebook to show you how to handle this or, or, or what you should do. But your heart certainly goes out to those, to those seniors in high school. And, you know, uh, I look back and, you know, some of the best sports memories I have are with my high school buddies, you know, right. and for right. them not to get to, to do that. It's, it's a sad deal. Yeah, no doubt. But we encourage them just grab the memories that you got to this point. That's right. And move on and uh, come to Ole Miss. You, there you go. Come on. <laughs> come be a student with the Rebels. That's for sure. There's all kind of opportunities, not only Division One, but intramural and different things of that nature. But, yeah, my thoughts are really with those coaches and, and players at that level too. Hey, it was fun again. Get a chance to talk to you. And look forward to visit with you again uh, next week as we are hopefully – we were maybe inching closer. Maybe we're, we're taking big steps toward – getting back to normal. Well, you're, you're starting to see a few signs of slowly, you know, doing some things back to normal and, and hopefully with each day and, you know, new medical information, we're able to do that. And, and we're just, like I said, we're going to be prepared. And as soon as we get to go ahead, uh, we're going to be able to get people back to Oxford and that's going to be great. No doubt. Can't wait. Hey, we'll continue with the Rev Talk coming up next. We'll visit with Kayla uh, Banworth, our new volleyball coach. And then right after that, Wilson Love from the football staff. Rev Talk will continue shortly. That's the sound of rush hour. Hello, recess. Mom! Work from home is a lot of work. Even though we're a little further apart right now, we're still in this together. Regions is donating this ad to local food banks to shine a light on them as they feed our neighbors in need. Learn how you can help or get help at regions.com slash food bank. Regions Bank, member FDIC. Question. Would you rather refuel while earning Exxon and Mobile Rewards plus points on every gallon? Or would you rather refuel while sitting through my sales pitch for an exciting new timeshare opportunity? Interesting. You'd prefer the points. Well, that's proof. People prefer earning and redeeming with Exxon and Mobile Rewards plus over owning a condo that's actually my shed. Earn points in store and at the pump with Exxon and Mobile Rewards plus. Sign up today. Terms and conditions may apply. Available at participating Exxon and Mobile locations. Right now is the best time to upgrade your appliances and lower your energy bill with Smart Choice rebates from Atmos Energy. As an Atmos Energy customer in Mississippi, you'll save up to $450 when you buy select high-efficiency natural gas appliances. So use less energy and help keep our planet green. Call 877-616-6267 or visit atmosenergy.com slash smartchoicems for details. Atmos Energy, your natural gas company. 
We need the fans, alumni, former players all united and everybody on the same page, which is to win championships. We didn't come here to be good. All right, that's not why we're here today. We came here to be great. Hey Rebel Nation, this is head football coach Lane Kiffin. Let's lock the bot Saturdays this fall. Become a season ticket holder today. Visit OleMissTix.com. That's OleMissTix.com. Hotty toddy. Our farmers work their operations from daylight to dark, and sometimes later. They deserve a lender that does the same. I'm Matthew Raff with the Mississippi Land Bank. If you make your living on the farm, this is your place. Since 1916, Mississippi Land Bank has worked alongside farmers and farm communities in North Mississippi. Come by and visit one of our six local branches. Mississippi Land Bank, this is your place. Visit us at mslandbank.com. Hotty Toddy Ole Miss. Now for more Reb Talk, here's David Callum. And I'm David Kelman. Welcome back to Reb Talk. We're excited again to be here uh, on our third show, right? Our third show since relaunching uh, Reb Talk. And we're looking forward to visiting with two more people on the show here tonight. We just visited with uh, Athletic Director Keith Carter. And we're honored now to have uh, Kayla Banworth, who is our new volleyball coach. Hey, Kayla. Hi there. Doing all right? I'm doing all right. How, how's it going for you? Pretty good. Pretty good. You know, just trying to stay at home a lot. As much as I travel in a normal year, this is crazy. I've never been at home this long, so it's, it's kind of wild. I know. It's, I'm starting to go a little stir crazy, but yeah, it's this new normal we're trying to navigate through a little bit. Yeah, and I'm going to talk to you about that in a moment. Uh, Kayla was a standout volleyball player at Nebraska and a wonderful career there was a Team USA, and she's a brand new head volleyball coach now at Ole Miss, just joined us, and as a player and assistant coach, she was part of four conference titles at Nebraska. Uh, they were in three Final Four appearances, had a national title as well, so um, she's got a ring somewhere. You got to show us that ring somewhere, but uh, her, <laughs> her career with uh, Team USA, they, they got eight medals, international competition, a bronze in the 2016 Olympic Games, so she, you know, we had, last week we talked uh, to Terrell Buckley about his football career and football has been good to him through the years and all the things he did as a high school player, college player, pro player and all this. And Kayla, yours kind of in your sport parallels that you got to just pinch yourself. Sometimes you think about the wonderful experiences you've had in the world of volleyball. Yeah, it seems, I mean, it's just, sometimes it doesn't quite seem real. And, and you know, the fact that it's already been four years since, since Rio Olympics is crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, I'll see video of myself playing or see pictures and it just, it just seems like a dream still. How hard was it for you? Now you're a head coach, you know, in the SEC, how hard was it to go <laughs> yeah. from being player to coach? Cause I, I know as a, as a player who just jumps into coach, you still feel like I can get out there and mix it up a little bit. Was that difficult? It was, it was tough. Um, coaching is definitely way different from playing um mm -hmm. even at you know a high level um there's just so many th different things that go into it when you're a coach that was really hard to adjust to um and you know coaching is kind of like a 24-hour job and uh, i thought being a professional athlete was kind of like that as well so there are some parallels but um yeah it's definitely different there was an adjustment period when i started at nebraska um but i was really fortunate to be able to work under coach cook so i learned a lot from him at nebraska and then yeah, after my three years there, felt felt ready to take on a head coaching position. What led you to Ole Miss? Why why this place, you know, and why uh, in your mind you thought, hey, I can lift this program to, to new levels and all. But what, in, what went into the decision process to for you to come to Ole Miss? Yeah, what originally drew me to Ole Miss was the administration. good relationship with those people um you know Lynette, Lynette Johnson and Julie Owen and Keith Carter I just felt like I made a really strong connection with them right from the get-go um and that was really important to me that I, I felt like I was going to be supported as a head coach um especially being my first head coaching position I felt like that was really really vital for me um and then upon visiting Oxford and visiting the campus it just um that kind of just sealed the deal you know it was a no-brainer the facilities we have um, are three years old and, and rival the best facilities in college volleyball, in my opinion. Um, the campus is beautiful. 
the city is great. Just the college feel of Oxford and the way everything kind of centers around Ole Miss athletics is really important to me. Um, and I just felt like this is a place that I can, I can recruit to and, and I can get good players here. And, and I just, I think that this is just kind of like an untapped gold mine that, that is just, you know, lying in wait. And I think that there's just a lot of potential here. Well, and it's sad that we're all at home because Oxford is gorgeous right now. The campus is beautiful. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty time of the year, isn't it? Yeah, I actually, I, you know, I got here at the beginning of January and the whole time I've been here so far, I've just said, you know, I can't wait till it gets green. I can't wait till, you know, the trees start growing and everything starts blooming and it's going to be so pretty. And, you know, now here we are stuck at home, but um, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's gorgeous. I mean, I've driven, driven through a couple times so far now that everything's bloomed and it's just gorgeous. I love it. You know, it's, it's kind of interesting for you though. I mean, you just had a baby. You told me now a month old is Maverick. And so you're getting a chance to be at home with your child. I mean, a lot of folks associated with sports world, they lose some valuable time with their children, but uh, this has got to be good for you right now, I would think. Yeah. The timing is really, really, um, I don't want to say convenient because obviously what's happening is not, is awful and, and, you know, it's just really tough to deal with. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm at home obviously all day, every day now. And, and I get to spend, you know, time with him that, you know, otherwise probably would have been really hard to do. You know, I would have been navigating through having to go to practices and be at the office um, and things like that. So I, yeah, I feel grateful that I'm getting to spend a lot of time with Maverick um, and, and figure out how to be a mother now, as well as a head coach. Um, but yeah, that's been great. And then obviously being at home, just still trying to navigate the head coaching world as well. Your background, we talked about your background some. How does that, you think, going to play into being able to recruit? There's a lot of good teams in our conference, obviously, but your Olympic experience alone has got to be a big plus, I would think. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely come in handy when I, you know, meet players that say I want to play professionally and I want to play for – you know, USA, I want to go to the Olympics, I want to go play overseas. And, um, you know, I can pitch to them that I'm someone that's done all that. I know how to navigate that world. I have connections in that sort of, in that realm. Um, so that comes in handy when, you know, I'm trying to convince players that maybe, you know, I'm the coach that they want to play for and I'm someone that I, you know, can help them um, continue their career beyond college. You're inheriting a team that had a strange year last year. They got off to a pretty good start. You know, really, really the very first weekend was kind of rough. Then they got things together at 1.6-0 and in the league and then just could not get over the hump and had the long losing stretch. It was just a strange year. And, you know, it, that happens sometimes to teams, and, and you see that. Uh, but with the with uh, schedule with that many games, that's kind of uh, rare. But you're inheriting – you're losing a couple of good players. Of course, nayo has gone and – uh, Emily's gone, but but you're inheriting some pretty good pretty good players, I would think. How do you feel about next year and and trying to rejuvenate them from a confidence standpoint? Yeah, I feel really good about next year. Um, you're right, we're losing some key players, some starters, but our 2020 class is really talented. Um, I'm really lucky, you know, inheriting those kind of players that I inherited. It. Um, and so I, I feel like we're going to be great. I feel like we have a chance to make the tournament, you know, the first year that I'm here. Um, we have a lot of learning to do, a lot of training to do, which again, right now is pretty difficult to do. And, right. um, and, you know, obviously the, the fall schedule might end up being a little bit modified depending on, you know, what happens with this whole situation. But, um, I feel really good about the talent we have. I feel good about, um, the personalities and the characteristics we have as a team right now to be able to come in and work hard and learn and get better um, to be able to compete in a really tough volleyball conference like the SEC. Yeah, I was looking, uh, Anna Bear, Lauren Bars, Avery Bug, Aubrey uh, Solomon are all coming back, and so that's a good group. Talk about the new faces, though, because we, we built a really good core group of fans, and I know you want to expand that uh, in the future, but we got some some really devoted folks that are coming to volleyball, which is great, and I'm sure they'd love to know who would be some of the new faces they're going to get to see. Yeah, so we already have two, well, we had two uh, incoming freshmen on campus that graduated early, um, Gigi Carvacho and Sam Schnitta um, are both very talented. Um, Sam played for one of the best clubs out of Kansas City. Um, Gigi is, you know, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, really talented pin hitter. Um, and, you know, they came in right away as, 
you know, should have been seniors in high school still and are competing, you know, at the highest level in our gym with, you know, the veterans that have already competed in the SEC. Um, so they've been doing great so far. Um, again, I'm just, I'm going to say this over and over this, this new normal is, is tough, you know, now that everyone's back at home and, yeah. um, we're trying to figure out how to get better in a, in a virtual world, but, um, you know, the, the few months that they were on campus, they did great. Um, and really, you know, stepped up the level of our gym. And then we now have, you know, we have four more incoming freshmen that, um, again, are just going to continue to raise the level in our gym and, 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 you know, get this program better and get us to where we want to go. Well, and, and uh, I talked to Coach Kiffin about it too. You know, he's looking for a spring training where, you know, you kind of look and evaluate one-on-one -on -one and, and you're kind of in the same boat. You're, you're going to lose some evaluation uh, going in, into the season. But I guess everybody is to some degree too. But as a new coach, it's even a little bit harder because it's a relationship building thing and all that stuff's going. Hey, I, I noticed too a couple of days ago they said that uh, Callaway Kaysen is joining your group too. Tell us a little bit about her. Yes. Yep, she's a setter. Um, she's from just outside of Atlanta, and she mm -hmm. played for one of the best youth clubs in the country, um, has won a couple open championships at the club level, um, and has competed and, and traveled internationally with that club to, to play against um, some international and junior national teams. Um, so she's, she's going to be great. And, you know, one of our setters um, actually transferred out after this or mid semester and is now going to be going to Rutgers. So we were looking for another setter for the program and, and we're really lucky to find someone like Callaway who, you know, as a senior setter to be uncommitted is really rare when you're, when you're talented. And, and we were very fortunate to find her um, still uncommitted and, and, and interested in Ole Miss. So again, very talented from one of the best clubs in the country and, and is again, going to raise the level and compete for a starting spot right away. Hey, neat. That's awesome. Hey, I want to congratulate you. Uh, we're visiting with Kayla Banworth, who's our new volleyball coach. She was named assistant for the U.S. National Collegiate Team. Congratulations on that. Unfortunately, sports is kind of on, on hold uh, right now, though. So, but, but, hey, that was a great honor, obviously. And I know you're very well thought of nationally, but uh, that, that's pretty cool. Yeah, thank you. That's awesome. I mean, I, I told Karch and the USA staff, you know, any, any way that I can help and any way that I can – be involved and, and continue to help Team USA go for a goal at the Olympics um, for the women, which has never been done. Um, I want to help any way I can. Hey, speaking of staff, talk about your staff because we, we got new faces here. I know uh, Maggie and uh, Bo and, and bringing those two in and Chas is still here, I guess, is your strength guy too, right? Yep, Chas is still our strength guy. i um, been super impressed with him and our, and our trainer, Becca. Um, from the get-go, obviously started working with them right away, and they've been amazing. Um, so I'm definitely going to keep them around. They, they're going to be vital to the program. Um, Bo uh, Lawler is one of my assistants. He was at Nebraska with me previously as, like, the video coordinator, did, you know, statistics and data volley and helped scouting reports and game plans and all that kind of stuff, and I would call him an expert in that field. Um, so he came with me from Nebraska, and then Maggie Scott was an assistant at LaSalle previous to this. Um, and then before that, she had an amazing playing career as a setter at Oregon. Um, so she came in right away and is, you know, in charge of the setters and our offense. Bo's going to handle things more from a defensive perspective. Um, so he'll be on that side of the ball. Maggie will be on the offensive side of the ball. I'll kind of obviously go both ways. Um, but, I mean, so far we've vibed really, really well together as a staff and practices were going great. Um, and now even our virtual film sessions are going really, really well. So I've been so impressed with those two, you know, especially with Maverick now here and I'm kind of split yeah. two ways. Um, they've picked up the ball um, and exceeded my expectations so far. So they've been amazing. Um, again, I just, I can't wait to get back in the gym with them because they're, they're excellent trainers, excellent volleyball minds, and, and they're going to help raise this level for sure. Well, we can't wait either. We are pulling for our fall sports to go. We got we got to flip that switch and get going. Hopefully, our country will be in better shape and and uh, we can do that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we're just itching to get back going again. Kayla, thank you so much. Looking forward to your career here at Ole Miss and uh, wishing you the very yeah. best. And uh, I know you got so like I said, you got some core fans. They're going to be uh, wanting to see what we can do in the fall.
I know I've, I've heard nothing but good things about the fan base. I've met a bunch of great people that, you know, yeah, we come to volleyball games and we love it. So keep coming to volleyball games. Matches are going to be so much fun. We're going to continue to build up the atmosphere there. Um, so yeah, thanks everyone for the support and hopefully we'll see you soon in the fall. All right, Kayla. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. We're going to continue with Reptile. When we come back, we're going to jump into football. We've got, uh, strength and conditioning coach Wilson Love, who's also a new face here at Ole Miss. Seems like we have dozens of those, but uh, we appreciate Kelly. We'll continue with Rep Talk shortly. Hi, this is Gant Boone with Oxford University Bank. You've heard about our Casasa Cash Checking Account paying 2.5% interest on balances up to $50,000. That interest could, depending on your balance, pay for an unlimited cell phone plan for you and one other, or pay for two gas fill-ups per month for an average size gas tank, or maybe a nice bit on the square is what you desire. Regardless, this is real money we will give you for doing three things you are probably already doing. So stop in today or visit us online at liveoxfordbankoxford.com, Oxford University Bank, member FDIC. Hey Rebel Nation, this is head football coach Lane Kiffin. Let's lock the VOT Saturdays this fall. Become a season ticket holder today. Visit OleMissTix.com. That's OleMissTix.com. Hotty toddy. For over 50 years, Mississippi Asthma and Allergies Board Certified Team of Allergists have treated patients in Mississippi by identifying triggers that cause patients trouble and creating personalized treatment plans. Now with offices in Jackson, Ridgeland, Meridian, D'Iberville, and Oxford, it's like we're right next door when you need us. Treating adults, infants, teens, and Ole Miss students. Find the Mississippi Asthma and Allergy Clinic near you at msaac.com. Mississippi Asthma and Allergy, helping Mississippi live life to the fullest. That's the sound of rush hour. Hello, recess. Work from home is a lot of work. Even though we're a little further apart right now, we're still in this together. Regions is donating this ad to local food banks to shine a light on them as they feed our neighbors in need. Learn how you can help or get help at regions.com slash food bank. Regions Bank, member FDIC. Hey Rebel Nation, this is head football coach Lane Kiffin. Let's lock the VOT Saturdays this fall. Become a season ticket holder today. Visit OleMissTix.com. That's OleMissTix.com. Hotty toddy. Hotty toddy Ole Miss. Now for more Rev Talk, here's David Callum. We're back on Rev Talk, and we've been meeting throughout the, the relaunch of Rev Talk, some of the new faces in Ole Miss athletics. And as we were talking about earlier, there's been a bunch of those, and we're uh, honored right now to get to visit with Wilson Love. Wilson is the uh, new head football strength and conditioning coach, Alabama grad 2013. But I like that Ole Miss shirt he's wearing. That looks pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah that's all i'm wearing these days baby hey, no it's where that paycheck comes from right, right no doubt <laughs> <laughs> but wilson uh as we mentioned the new strength and conditioning coach spent the last three years at florida atlantic and prior to fau he was two years at his alma mater in Al- at alabama assistant football strength and conditioning coach he was at bama with uh, coach kiffin when the tide won the national title in 2015 and of course they played for it in 16 as well uh, defensive graduate assistant 2014 there. Uh, one year stint provided the Alabama Navy the opportunity to work with the Tide's defensive line uh, while he was there too, which is kind of cool. And of course, he's worked with obviously Kirby Smart and, and Nick Saban and Lane Kiffin. And, uh, you know, I, I would think, uh, Wilson, that those influences got to be really, really cool. You know, it, it was an incredible experience just from my brother played at Alabama. So I got to see the start of what the dynasty is called at, from 2007. When I was just in middle school. My brother was on the team and you make those relationships with those coaches of Coach Sabe and Coach Kevin Steele. And you realize now 12, 13 years later, it's like, wow, it's such a blessing just to be around those guys every single day and see the, the process and see exactly how old kids and you know, it, was, it really was an incredible experience just to everybody I get to be around and, you know, just a small part of all that success. Um, it was an incredible experience. You, you were a defensive end. Brother was an offensive lineman, right? 
There was. There was a lot of one-on-one matchups in practice, and I, I think I have a winning percentage on those. <laughs> we got to call him and find out. <laughs> no, it was. We'll do that later. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. But I uh, played a defensive end at Alabama and uh, was part of. Well, gosh, you, you know, you're right. You think we all part of what four? I think SEC championships and uh, in your career and uh, three national championships as well. I mean, that's got to be really, really uh, good stuff. I want to talk to you a little bit too about. Uh, your style, for one thing, you know, I, I saw some videos you did with our kids when you got here and you got engaged with them immediately. And I know that building relationships has to be awfully important. FAU put out a, a video of, of you on the practice field. And I, I think they called you an animated bottle of five-hour energy and Tasmanian devil. Wow, I mean, how about that? How about that? Where'd they come up with that? <laughs> but, Lord knows. Talk about, talk about that style. And, and, you know, I'm an old school guy to good old days. It was almost like an army sergeant, you know, trying to get you fired up to, to do workouts. Right. You got to do this. Uh, but it seems like you're not only accomplishing a lot of things, but making it fun for the guys too. No doubt. Um, the biggest thing, what I try to do is, is the one thing that matters is the kids. Mm -hmm. All the players to me. And that's what I was taught and that's what I believe in. And so the whole craziness aspect, that's just me being real. And I always tell the guys, shame on me if I'm not the same – Wilson love every single day because I'm going to give them my 100% every single day. And, you know, my style is simply I'm going to do whatever I can to give a blueprint to each and every kid individually so they, so they can succeed of it on and off the field. And I care more about them as a, a, as a person than I do a football player. And I want them to know this and this only. I'm going to give them everything, and I love them, and I'm going to do whatever I can to get them right. And everything's going to take care of itself because every kid's different. Um, when it comes to the weight room aspect, it's all about power, but also, too, each position's different. So we're going to train each position totally different. When it mm -hmm. comes to the aspect, this game's about speed. You're not going to find the slow dinosaurs anymore. So we're going to sprint. We're going to jump. We're going to be how explosive can we be. But also, too, the science behind all that. We have all the awesome gadgets and things like that. But the gadgets are one thing. But if you're not doing it with the right intentions, then there's no reason having it. So we do a baseline testing all the guys. We give them feedback. We teach them why we do it why we do velocity-based training, why we jump, or why we do the extra yoga to the side, why we do the flexibility. But the most important, all that, you can have the best program in the world. If you don't show that you love the kids every single day, nothing matters. Yeah, and that's exactly. why I got out of D-line coaching to be a strength coach because you get to influence each and every kid individually rather than one group. You know what? And I'm just blessed to do it, honestly. That's just the thing that comes down. God has blessed me and Coach Kiffin's given me a great opportunity and uh, Keith Carter just to be here. And – that's kind of my spiel. <laughs> you know, Chris Kiffin had mm -hmm. kind of alluded. I, I knew Chris when he was here a little bit. Right. And uh, uh, a phenomenal coach, by the way. Chris is awesome. really, really good, too. And I'm sure he had some degree of influence of, with helping us get Lane to, to Ole Miss because Lane had been here and yada, yada, yada. But Chris talked about how – I don't know if he used the word nerd, but how Lane is just really into old school football mixed with a new school football and the science involved. And it's obvious, like yourself, he surrounded himself with people that are in that mode too. No doubt. Coach Kiffin's always going to stay ahead of the times too. I mean, there's old school philosophies or certain ways you're taught, but you got to be ahead of the times. You got to adapt. And Coach Kiffin's really good with that. And his brother, Chris, was really good with that too. I mean, they're both, I mean, their father, Monty, I mean, he's 80 years old. He's still doing everything that he needs to do for this generation type of football. He's not, in the 1975 NFC Championship game. Yeah, he might talk about it, but <laughs> the philosophy is still stuck there. That's the best thing about the Kiffin family. I mean, God gave them a great gene and mindset, and it's just incredible just to see them, how they approach the game each and every day. It's, it's incredible. Yeah, I encourage any of our fans to go Google Monty Kiffin and look at oh, some yeah. of those old videos, Wilson. I mean, right. it's amazing. I mean, he may trump you as far as excitement goes. That's why I said that. If you think I bring juice, this guy brings more juice than anybody. <laughs> I mean, you gotta watch Monty Kiffin and get after it. And yeah. the kids love him though. He, he's, a, you know what? I, I learned, I learned that from him. The Kiffin family—they're all about the kids. All about the kids. X's and O's is second. If you don't love the kids, nothing else matters. And I, I'm fired up about that just because this works on people like that. You uh, spent more time with with current players than the rest of the staff because of just the nature of what you're uh, allowed to do. Before we had the shutdown with the coronavirus and all. How did they respond to you originally, you know, a change in the strength and conditioning coach? And uh, how did it go as far as building relationships and kind of sharing that with the rest of the staff? Well, I'll say this, you know, Matt Luke and his staff did an incredible job getting great kids. And it, every single day, I'm, 
I look at myself in the mirror, how can I serve these kids? How can I get better, 1% better each and every day? And you know what, it was easy job, it was. It was really easy because those kids are naturally so bought in, they so respectful, they understand what it means. But one thing we approached it differently is when I gave them their workout clothes, or a week when we gave them their workout clothes, there was nothing old Miss on there because my thing was, let's create an identity. Let's work on actually, you have to earn that right to be a team. You have to earn that right to wear that old Miss. And that means something because everything, anything in life that's worth anything, you have to work for it. So to me, we weren't giving them old Miss shirts. It was a plain gray t-shirt. And they love that idea. They understand you know what? It's one unit, one heartbeat. It's a band of brothers. It's a pro mindset. They understood that. And you know what? I had so much fun for those eight weeks that I was with mm-hmm. them. I'll, every day I wake up at 3.30, I kiss my wife goodbye, and I get home at 8 o'clock at night because I love it because I get to serve these kids and be around a great group of guys that, you know, this staff, we'd have nothing to do with the recruiting besides a couple transfers, but it's an incredible group of guys, and I'm so blessed just to do this and serve these kids every day. It's well, and you've been a player too, and, and, and you know right. that you get comfortable with people around you, uh, and then you had this massive change, and uh, you, you, you go into it, I'm sure if you're a player, thinking, okay, what's this going to be like? And you were on the point of, of really representing the entire staff on, on kind of giving them a hint of what the, the Kiffin era is going to be like. Yes, sir. And the good thing is with our fourth quarter program, off-season program, our staff was around a lot. Mm-hmm. And they'd be out there with our off-season drills once recruiting's over. So, you know, the best thing about this staff, what Coach Kiffin's done, he's gotten a group of men and women, too, with, with Kate Wade having academics and player development, that just care about the kids. They mm-hmm. want to serve. They want to get these guys better on and off the field and this staff is incredible and I coach Kiffin what Keith Carter's done it, it's amazing I've never been around anything like it and, and I've been blessed to bring on some really good staff when I was a young buck at Alabama this is this is incredible it's a bunch of guys who are really good at what they do and they care about what they do and they care about the kids number one and being around that and for them to see the work these guys each week getting better and better and better the testing we did in the weight room from week two to week eight it, it just what we would put on the data the, from their from their speed element from their jumps it's just and you see their bod pods and their body pictures. It's just like, whoa, who are these guys? <laughs> That's the thing. It's just a snip of it, though. So we're just getting started. Because in the day, if it doesn't transfer to the field, and I'm not doing my job. If it, if it doesn't happen when we play Baylor, you know, if we don't see that transformation, the guys playing as one unit, one heartbeat, then we're not doing our job. So we still have a lot of work to do, man. We're just getting started. So Well, I know, I know you're really enthusiastic about the – the area that you're into. Give give our fans, Wilson, just a, a thing or two that's kind of new in the strength and conditioning world, or maybe something that's on the horizon that, that may even help right. you further. So uh, a big thing now is people are always so caught up in lift heavy, 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 heavy. I love lifting heavy, man. I'll tell you, I, I, I try to lift heavy this morning. I about hurt my back, but whatever. But the point of not always lifting heavy is this game's about speed, all right? It's power, all right? You're not always lifting 100% max away every single time because you're not moving it fast. It's about bar speed. It's about training how to be fast, how to jump, core stability. You can't just be dinosaur thinking. You can have dinosaur values when it comes to the mindset training, the bread and butter, the main lifts, yes. But the, what's going to get you different now is, is how fast you are, how explosive you can be, how an offensive lineman could come out of his hips faster when it comes to not coming so fast. You just lift a heavy weight. It's all about being fast and explosive. Yeah, you have to be strong, but the data we've been getting is the faster you move the weight at max effort, it's going to make you stronger. It's going to make you better. And we tested our guys. It was unbelievable. The theory is there, you know, and that's the thing too. Like forever recruits hear it. Like we're going to do whatever we can to be the best version of us on that field. If there's data out there, if there's a product out there, we're going to do it. But I know this, though, we're going to lift weights as fast as we can with the best technique and the best effort, and we're going to sprint fast, and that's what we're going to do. And that's what football's coming down to. It's not a bunch of big old dudes that can't move. You know, we're going to do yoga, all right? So that's who we are, and that's what's going to make us a better team when it comes to the physical side of it and the injury prevention side of it. And the cool thing about it, as I see this, is that as an individual – you want your strength and conditioning people to maximize what you can do. You want your coaches to make you as smart as you can from a football standpoint so that you personally can be successful. But the end result is then you become an important piece to the team. But my, my number one thing is making sure the kids, they have everything they need to be the best version of them. Mm-hmm. You, you can have the best science program. You have all the data. You can have all that. But if the kids aren't bought in, the kids aren't going the right direction, nothing matters. 
nothing matters. It's because the science is great, but the number one thing there is is the players. It's as simple as that. The players, they care for the players, serving the players. Never self-promote yourself. It's all about the kids. Nothing else matters. And that's just who we are. In the, and our strength staff's incredible. We have a, great, a lot of young men in there, too, that help us out. It's just incredible, man. It, it, we're so blessed to have what we have here at Ole Miss. Now that they're cooped up, and, and I, I talked to Shannon Singletary a couple of weeks ago, Josie Nicholson in her area last week. Now I'm visiting yep. with you about strength. And what can you do to help them while they're, like, stuck at home? So we send them bands. We finally got uh, the go-ahead from the conference to send them exercise stuff. So they have different types of bands, jump rope. We can send them programs, nutrition stuff. We send them a stretching plan. Everything that they would do here, possibly without weights, we give them a plan. Now, I can't monitor them and say, hey, how was that band pool today? Did you do a good <laughs> yeah. do that? Uh, we, we have a whole running program for them based on sprints, based on jumps, change of direction, okay? A lot of jump rope workouts to keep the guys, their feet going fast, keep that motor some of that CNS getting that thing right. So, but we can't monitor them by any means necessary. But you know what? The guys are doing a great job. They're, st they're staying positive as hard as it is because the best thing about what we're doing right now is Coach Kiffin is all about – we have a team speaker every Monday from Inky Johnson, the Seal Shepherd. Um, I don't want to throw it out there, but Eli Manning's talking to the kids Thursday, but mm -hmm. Kevin Elko. So every Monday we have a team meeting – and, the, and a really good motivation speaker talks to them, puts some new things in their mind just to keep them going and keep them motivated. Because you know, during these times, it's tough. And, it, no, and every kid's hurting right now because they're not playing football. They miss spring. They're not with their guys. They're at home. And there's so many worries in this world. But the biggest thing, it, it, having that Monday motivation, to me, is almost just as important or more than the workouts they're doing because it keeps the mindset going the right direction. You know, Wilson, I asked uh, Shannon and Josie both, too, and kind of a, a closing thing to do with them is that, okay, then there's just the general public. General public's at home, too. And there may be a bunch of them at different ages that right. lost the opportunity to go to gyms, you know, and my, my daughter and her husband own a gym in, in, in uh, uh, Germantown. And mm -hmm. so the, those have all been shut down. And what right. can you do at home to, to not lose what you, you've done to this point? So when it comes to the general public, you just got to keep moving. You have to move. Right now, the things you can't sit on the couch all day. All right, the first things first, you have a great mindset when you wake up in the morning. You need to write down what your goals are. All right, when it comes to the fitness side of things, move around, do some, do body weight push ups, all that. You know, you can do isometric, so you can hold a squat at the, at the deep position or push against a wall, things like that, different variations that you can do. But a lot of things, too, is if you have the funds, buy a resistance band, buy a jump rope, go outside and jump rope. Do some yard work. You can get towels to pull yourself up. I mean, you tie it to a tree. You can do so many different variations, and there's so much great information out there of what you can do with a home workout program. That's amazing. I'm not a big Twitter guy. I'm not a big social media guy because I never try to self-promote. Whenever I do anything on social media, it's for the kids and the program. I try to never do anything that involves Wilson Love because that don't matter to me. So I try to re retweet as much stuff possible so the whole world can see. So everybody can see, not the whole world, Ole Miss family, our, t our kids can see this. And I, hey, this is kind of a cool thing to do. So the good thing about the people staying at home, man, if you, if you need something, we're going to keep putting it out there. Strength staff will, if there's something cool, we'll, we'll re retweet it. We'll send, we'll send a video. But um, our kids now, we give them video instruction stuff if, if they need it. So um, it's incredible. Well, and uh, at Coach yeah. Wilson Love on Twitter, right? At Coach Wilson Love. Uh, I believe so. I think that's Something right. Something like that. Okay. Something I know. like that. <laughs> hey, Kyle Campbell, several years ago, he said, hey, David, we need to get you on Twitter. And of course, my right. old school self, I said, we got to do what? Twitter. Yeah, they, well, you didn't know what it was. I, I've been tweeting like mad ever since. That's there, there we go. Hey, before, before we let you go, you mentioned your wife. Talk a little bit about your family. I mean, we're introducing new people to the Ole Miss, uh, right. Ole Miss crowd. You mentioned your brother, too. Mm -hmm. No doubt. So I met my wife in uh, South Florida when I was at FAU. Um, Alexis, uh, she, she's born and raised down there. So the transition from the beautiful beaches of South Florida to Oxford, Mississippi is a little different for her. But <laughs> she's doing great, though. Um, she loves it here. And, you know, it's a good way to start off our, our, new, uh, our new wedding life. So <laughs> it's incredible. No doubt. We're all so happy. But it's just us. I don't have any kids. Only I have are the 110 we have playing for football. So that's the only kids I have. And I know you're loving on them. I can tell. There's no doubt. I do. That. I love them more than anything else in the world. I miss them so much. All right, man. Hey, look, we're going to get you on in the fall when we do real rev talk uh, okay. from Bure and all. I wish you the best. And hopefully we'll get out of this mess pretty soon and you can no start doubt. loving on them again, man. Awesome. Thanks.
Thank you, Wilson. Appreciate you. And that'll wrap up this week's edition of Reb Talk. We'll see you next week.